Greeks consider Mikis Theodorakis a national hero. Well, with one notable exception, Theodorakis himself once said, I'm not a hero. Heroes die young. I'm just a citizen who does his duty. Nevertheless, Greece's culture minister says her country has lost part of its soul. And fans of the iconic composer agree. He made poetry familiar to every Greek, to say the least. He gave sound to the Aegean Sea. Another one followed. Our history, experiences and Greek temperament has never been and will never be more accurately captured by his music. Theodorakis was born on the island of Chios in 1925. His first concert was at 17, but soon after he joined his homeland's resistance against German and Italian occupation. During the Greek Civil War, he was arrested, tortured and exiled, but later returned. He went on to study at conservatories in Athens and Paris during the 1940s and 50s. He's credited with composing more than 1,000 works, which include symphonies, operas, ballets and film scores. Fighting for life, laughing at death. The most famous, of course, the soundtracks to Zorba the Greek. Our time. Serpico. And Z. But political life for Theodorakis continued. He became an icon of resistance against the Greek junta in the late 1960s and 70s. During this period, the regime put him in prison and banned his music. They have the tanks but we have the ideals and the songs. And those ideals could not be stopped, not under torture or exile or even death at the ripe old age of 96. Mikis Theodorakis lives on through the musicians who perform his music far and wide from the shores of his final resting place. Joining me now is Theodorakis biographer Vasilis Aswestopoulos. Hi there, it's good to have you with us today. So, let's start with this. Tell us why you wanted to write a biography about Theodorakis. My relation to Theodorakis starts as the relation of, I think, any Greek in my age. It's a childhood. My father used to sing songs of Theodorakis. I was born during the military junta in Greece, and the music was forbidden. So as a child, I heard my father singing a song. I asked, what kind of song is this? It's a forbidden song from Mikis Theodorakis. Why it is forbidden? Because Theodorakis is resistance against the junta. So it was my first political impressions, and as well as my first listenings. I grew up in Germany, and uh, we hear we heard the radio of Munich every evening. The radio of Munich was sending one hour Greek program. And one hour Greek program was full of Mikis Theodorakis and uh, Manos Hatsidakis. So I, grew, I literally grew up sleeping every evening with Mikis music. I woke up hearing my father talking about Greece and uh, the actions Mikis did. Uh, Mikis Theodorakis came a lot of times to Aachen in Germany when uh, he was fighting against the military dictatorship in Greece. So uh, it's like a kind of family member for me. And I think a kind of family member of all of us. And growing up, you discover a lot of other songs. It's not only the Sotaki. The Germans are talking about only about the Sotaki and thinking that Sotaki and Buzuki are the typical Greek uh, dance and typical Greek music. They don't think about Mikis Theodorak inventing literally the Sotaki from the Sirtos, uh, the Cretan dance, and bringing the Buzuki to the Greek music. The Buzuki to the Greek music, what does it mean? Uh, 
the Buzuki came with the minor Asia Greeks to Greece, and they were not loved by anyone when they came as refugees. It's like the same situation like now. And in the 60s, you have two composers, first of all, Mikis and Hatsidakis, bringing the Buzuki into the Greek music, and Mikis brought it into the symphonic orchestra too. Mm-hmm. So you have the connection between the West and the East, and as a Greek grown up uh, in Germany with a, let's say, German mother, because she was mixed too, with a German mother, I'm West and East, so I felt a relationship and I saw him as a child, as a giant, great giant in front of me, uh, conducting his orchestra. I was fascinated and it's a lifelong fascination. So, of course, when I was asked to buy a bio- uh, to write a biography about a living person, I said, okay, there cannot be another than Miki Selvarakis. And do you remember meeting him and how was he? Miki Selvarakis was a multiple talent. And first of all, he was very good in telling stories. I don't know if anybody of you does know the, the Hollywood movie of Nolan, uh, Inception, where the, uh, the whole play is that somebody is going in different levels of dreams. And I felt it like this movie because Mickey started to talk about one thing, came to another, came to another, came to another, and ended again with another thing. Let's uh, describe it. He could start with uh, talk about Mao and then discussing about uh, the situation in Greece uh, <laughs> with the, the austerity, and then talking about the problems of the use of today uh, with actual, uh, very actual paradigma. And he could connect all this with music even talking with yeah, music, with absolutely. Sorry to cut you off there. This is very interesting. And I think it's not surprising coming from a man who has so much to say, I guess. But I wonder, how was he in person? I mean, he comes off as a very fierce character, you know, looking at him, at him from the outside as a Turkish person. But then, you know, talking to him, tell us your personal experience in how uh, his character was. He was against anything of with any kind of violence. So when you met him in person, he was a most calm person, a good listener. Uh, he, he was able to listen to, to see what's going on without uh, making any interruption, without uh, being stubborn in anything. And then he started just to convince you with arguments. And in a way, if you are dealing with Greek philosophers in a, in a Socratic way, leading you to find your answer. Not saying this is the answer, you mm-hmm. have to accept it. He was leading you to your answer and not with violence, but okay, he, he could be uh, strict when he sa- said something, but it was not violent and not uh, hostile. Okay, so Vasilis, uh, one thing that's very interesting for me is that for every Greek person, and I think uh, for every person in, in the region, he is a, a very important political dissident figure, but then also he's a very important composer, a, a musician. So do you feel like sometimes maybe he felt like his musician side was not sufficiently appreciated in his home country and his political position sort of overshadowed his uh, talent in music? No, I, I don't think we can uh, divide him into two persons, into a politician or a musician, because his mu- music, his art was political. To bring an uh, instrument of the refugees into the music, to bring the poems of uh, high poetry into the mouth of the simple persons. Uh, imagine Odyssey Solitis, imagine Pablo Neruda, he was not only for Greece, he, he, he composed the Janto General for this is, this is the poems of Pablo Neruda. So everybody in Chile is able to sing the poetry. Everybody in Greece is able to sing not only Greek poetry. We have uh, Turkish poetry brought with music to us too. And this is, this is a deeply political art, if you are working this way. So I cannot divide the politician and 
the mm. composer. It was one person and one intention just to unify, to bring a kind of peace, to bring harmony. And the harmony he tried to bring, even with controversial actions in politics, is the same harmony he tried in music. Literally the same thing. Okay, so uh, one last question, Vasilis. Uh, he was obviously a Marxist uh, composing classical music, which might uh, come across as a contradictory position for a lot of people. So um, do you feel like he managed to attract and sort of maybe elevate working classes uh, with music? Yes, but uh, you have to think about his, his first idol. His first idol was Ludwig van Beethoven who was a revolutionary classical musician. We, we may not forget that Beethoven was a fan of uh, Napoleon the time he lived. He was a fan of the French Revolution. So when Mickey started with Ludwig van Beethoven, I think he was a very good pupil of Beethoven. And of course, he grew up and he is a kind of for, us, for Greeks, okay, he is Beethoven for Greeks because he wrote classical parts too. He had a lot of master classes. And uh, if you know uh, Theodore Coenzis, the conductor, he was visiting him until the last month to, to discuss about classical music okay. and to learn. And... Okay, well, uh, this is really interesting. But unfortunately, this is all the time we have. Vasilis Aswestopoulos, it was lovely having you with us today. Thanks a lot. <laughs>